exactly what's going on for either side. So, yeah, this is going to be a very vanilla matchup, I think. Although I may have said that about Envious Fnatic yesterday, and that was anything but. That was super crazy. It was high octane action, Dan. It was really nuts. Which like was fun to the watch. motocross of Counter Strike, if you will. Yeah, and we'll have the uh, opener from Flusher down middles, but we get the trades coming in as TSM push up and do the damage towards Banana. But we have a good opener from Fnatic once again. You know, that uh, that that trade based meta on the top of Banana is uh, definitely allowing them to keep control of the situation. They've got two players in place to defend this B-bomb site. Is it going to be enough? Will this guy die? Oh my goodness, KJMI gets the kill with the knife. It, that's what it comes down to, James. The knife. Yeah, and we did pick KJMI in our team as well. <coughs> so far, so good. K Crim's taking down Device. Fnatic on a two-man retake, and it's going to be difficult for TSM to actually plant the bomb here, although it made a bit easier now. Crim's with 8 HP. Minutes on the clock here for TSM. Playing the waiting game, and they can provide coverage, and indeed they will. Zipnik's just waiting. Cajun be baiting. So yeah, there's not a lot to, to talk about that round, although one thing that is quite cool regarding pistol rounds and a new update is that generally speaking, the teams that have the better pistoling players now should be able to get more edges out of the pistol rounds, and there should be a, a slight decrease of the variance there, because previously, part of the variance was the fact that Okay, like the skill ceiling on the pistol rounds is not super high, generally speaking, on the top, top level, and everyone is really good at aiming. But it's also like some shots would just not connect. It's very ambiguous what would actually hit. So that should help teams. But we'll see. Um, we had the force buy here from Fnatic. TSM with a good start, although Zipnix is weak. Pronax is going to probe and see if he can do something with the mag, and there it is. Very timely pickup of the mag 7 to get the frag onto Zipnix. So four versus four. And uh, Fnatic might have a chance to win this one, depending on how TSM decide to attack into into a bomb site. TSM with a lurker towards the B bomb site, where only Olaf Meister remains. He will fall. Crims was rotating away, but he's forced to go back. Pronax taking Dupree to the butchers of a meat shot from the balcony with that Mag Seven. Now Fnatic have two players in position on CT, but nobody on the bomb site itself on the B bomb site. That is decoy towards A. Rest of the T's, all the T's towards B. Crims has a good angle. If the Vice goes for a peek, he's heavily tagged and he could find himself in trouble. He's got a P90. So he's got a bit of a gamble to make. I think he may just choose to shoulder peek a little bit and be the bait, but Pronax bringing Cajun B to the butchers as well. Will he find any more victims here? Carrigan has a good position and there are no kits on Fnatic. All he has to do is stay alive for a second or two and this round will be his. The suppressing fire there, but they're deciding to actually back away. They know there's too much time gone, and they cannot win the round. You, you actually have to credit TSM for the save, the save that they managed to pull off there. They managed to get into that B bomb site and actually get the bomb down. And I really liked how Device played so patiently and so disciplined. He's very low on HP, so of course, you know, peaking there is is going to be pretty rough because if they tag you at all, you're probably going to die. So he managed to peak just at the right timing to do some damage, cause some distraction, but also not to bait his teammates too heavily. So I, I like that play from Device, and uh, they just barely managed to edge that. But look at this, we've got JW on the AWP. Boom. That's going to be KGB dead straight away. He's going to take the AWP into apartments now. Typical JW fashion. What else can he do with that? Yeah, I think he needs to be a little bit careful, though. Third round AWP is always a precarious position. I mean, look, he's got a, he's got a third round AWP. And three of his teammates have pistols, Dan. Yeah, it's so weird. Fnatic have no intention of changing their ways from the previous match. They, they deserve this, Dan. They want it. They have the full confidence. They are repeat champions. Although, it's TSM who are the two-time Face It League champions looking to add their third. Fnatic being champions from the previous year. Looking, looking to reclaim their crown. Both of these teams fighting for the throne, Dan. So we have the push coming in from TSM, finally up and on it. And Fnatic are holding on fairly well. Olaf Meister takes a frag. He goes down to one HP. It's really nice that he escaped because he's actually holding on to two flashbangs there. So that those flashes will be very useful in slowing down TSM and buying time for his team to rotate into this position. But Carrigan's going to try to speed things up. And there it is. First kill comes in, but JW's in so fast. And that's going to be him dead. But the trades are effective. Fnatic are looking strong right now. And that AWP is on the floor to be picked up that JW's dropped. And Zinix is going to try to rotate back towards the A side of the map, but I don't think that he's really got time to do this. As especially uh, Pronax, even though he's got no Kevlar, is waiting. 
Yep, if he goes for the... Uh, oh, he's gone for the sneaky plant. That's very smart from Zipmix. And he's going to make it, but he's not going to make it out. Bit of money for his team. And, I mean, F Fnatic started that uh, that round with three people on pistols. And they sur they have three people survive. So was that even an expensive round for them? <laughs> How do you calculate that one? It's, uh, it's a pretty weird one. But it's, it's really nice that TSM got the bomb down. They have to force it up now, considering Fnatic's position. And here we go. It's good. This is going to be more high octane action. I like the pace that we're seeing from both teams. Now, you can only imagine that JW is going to get aggressive here again at the start of the round. But to deter that, we can see Device is already lining up the smoke from T spawn. Yep, that smoke flies all the way down mid, bounces off the back wall, then lands perfectly in the middle. So he was lining it up with uh, one of the posts on the terrace roof. When he runs off the end of the balcony, he does the jump throw. Although this time it's left a bit of a gap. Will JW punish TSM for this mistake? Mid gets a bit of a re-smoke here. Got smokes going towards the uh, graveyard or pit area. AW getting tagged through the smoke, but it's Flusher going down first towards the arch area. Olaf Meister coming in to take down Carrigan in trade. And TSM's numbers are thinning very fast indeed. Just, just a Dupree left. And Fnatic survived with four players. They've survived the test, a trial down. When their money could have been decimated. Yeah, it's... Uh it's a pretty darn important round to win. And it's quite cool as well because you can see that they were putting a lot of the, 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 the uh, decisions on the buys. They didn't have to buy as soon as they did, as soon as we saw them buy. But they wanted to make sure that TSM never got any money going on the T side. Usually teams will, will kind of reverse it and put the emphasis on denying money for a team's CT side and care about more about their own economy. Um, but we saw the, the switch up there. Fnatic just wanted to starve them out straight away. And it's quite cool to see that. But they're, tr they're trying to just push them to the limits on all sides. Zibnix was skipping through the apps like a girl in a meadow with a basket full of strawberries there. But at the end of the, e at the, end of the meadow was a man with an M4, which isn't very common. I, ha I just have this, I have the image of this, this girl, like Zibnix's face, and it's actually hilarious. That in, is amazing. In before photoshops. So both teams on somewhat of a full buy now. TSM lacking in grenades somewhat, but Fnatic are here. And ready to play. Bunch of incendiary grenades, flashes, smokes, the usual stuff. Oh, we have the boost over the smoke on mid. Something that I first saw from Renegades used very effectively. However, Device will be ready for the challenge. DW has left the building, blasted into another dimension. There we go. We got uh, TSM trying to, trying to put pressure on the wounds. But again, it's hard to know exactly how Fnatic have decided to to adjust their rotation. Now they have, uh, they've gone to towards a, an A stack here and they've left Crims alone on the B-bomb site. He's, he's just sitting there completely alone. And he's so, he's so far into the bomb site that he, if they decide to walk up and then rush it, he won't get help in time. So this is the gamble Fnatic have decided to take where they've, they're saying, okay, we ho really hope that you attack A because we can deal with that a lot better. But that said, they're actually rotating a guy now, just now towards B that they haven't spotted anything. This could be really painful if, TSM go in right now. So there's a peek for him information, but Cajun B comes up late and punishes Flusher for it. Pronax in the pit, takes down Zipex, but he will be traded by Dupree. Three versus two. Fnatic in a position where I was going to say they might consider saving, but Olaf Meister doesn't even get the choice. He is removed from the round, leaving Crims versus three people. Holding an angle, knows that says somebody in boiler, but for how long will he do this? And when will he decide to back off? Indeed, that's what he'll do now. Don't you normally apply pressure to a wound to quell bleeding? I suppose so, yeah. Yes. I guess, I guess you know... Yeah. I guess. <laughs> well, I mean, I, mean I, I, guess, I, I guess it depends, you know, I guess the context there was... You want yeah, the vinegar, there, there's, Dan. There's a weak point. You want the vinegar in there. And you want to, yeah. Okay, whatever. So or <laughs> or you, could, you could make an analogy on surface tension. That would be good. <laughs> I'm just gonna. Double Ops, Dan, I'm, have I'm, come I'm, out. I'm done. Double Ops have come out for the Fnatic side. Olaf Meister and JW. Where will Olaf go with his? Will we see one per site? Indeed, we will. He is on the banana. But the fruit is not ripe just yet. We'll make no connection with the Danish side. The Danish side, he went straight to the lab when this update came out, looking for all the nooks and crannies and behaviours 
of the new Counter Strike. Is, it, yeah. is this a new era? Are we in a new era now? No. Hitbox era. Or the hit capsule era. We're in the capsule era, Dan. We're in the Kinder Surprise era of Counter Strike. Well, it looks like TSM about to jump out of apartments into that top mid take. But Fnatic still have a hold here. They're, they're actually, they're, they've got the crossfire going, so here it is. Entry with those grenades. Dupree very, very fast for that one. It's Bronex up by the balcony, but he's got a lot of work to do. He's got players on coming from multiple positions, and Xenix will get the kill, and he will occupy the pit position. So TSM with a very strong stronghold of the A bomb site now. So their, their post plant will be really nice, but the bomb is actually a little bit far away, so it's not even been planted just yet. So Fnatic will have the, uh, the luxury of some time. Oh, nice jump through. Crims will get the kill with the help of Olofmeister, and they are set to mount the retake. But there's two orps. Are they going to swap one out? This is going to be tough. Stuck behind the smoke is JW. And again, this is they're carrying $20,000 of equipment. So it's a tricky situation. It's basically an unwinnable round now. They're looking to do damage. Crims can do that. Olofmeister coming in to kill Zipniks as well. Is he gonna go for the defuse? They're all dead, wow. Dan. I can't. It's, they. It's, what? What happened? I don't even know. He's brought. He's brought out the, the defuse dreadlocks, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> I, d I don't know what happened there. That was amazing. I mean, Fnatic, of course, the smoke went away. We actually had a push coming in from TSM. That that was, you know, enough to kill one player up top mid as uh, Olaf and Crims Crims approached, and then it just, just they just managed to get the, they they got an opportunity to get shots and they hit the shots first time i mean that's i feel like most did. most of the time the ct side is saving there but fanatic dan is all i can say they had two orbs there that's so crazy and now fanatics all of my will be the one to pick down middle he got a nice spawn and that's going to be carrigan very dead so he's going to be calling from the sidelines indeed jw has switched places with all of my so he'll be headed towards the b bomb site but no fun will be had there is a smack down there for now tsm will be left to consider their options do pre limited to just the tech mine at the moment. And he will be the one going through apps. Those close quarters engagements will be favorable, but there is no one to engage just yet. Nobody answering his phone calls. So we're having the standard two man push through the apps now. There was a bit of a peak there from Pronax, but he's moved back just in time to avoid Zimnix, which means no information for the Dane. A nice nade there from the CT side. They're starting to move away, but before Olaf Meister can get to the site, he's going to get traded. Uh, not, not traded, just completely taken up. Dupree and Zipnix combining to take up Phonax as well. And the A bomb site is falling apart for Flusher. Well, for Fnatic, but Flusher held it down for them. It's so hard to predict how these rounds are going to go because it's once, difficult. Once, once TSM go in to Fnatic, and you're like, oh wow, they got a really nice entry. Then it's like, oh wow, Flusher just did an incredible shot, and it's like it's it's just a series of incredible like displays of skill from both sides, and you just have no idea which side the coin is going to land on. That was very surprising because after the short play got taken down, the balcony play was heavily tagged immediately as well. Yeah. So it looks like TSM just take the round, but now they find themselves on an eco. Razor thin balances in these rounds, but not this time. We have Glocks, and a Techdyne, and a Deagle. Can't expect much to be done. Yeah, it's uh, the prospects are not good. But they, 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 they know they're pretty weak, and wow, they are really, really low now. Both JW and Crims are... Oh, they've been abusing died. this! What is going on here? Oh my god, that's disgusting. They were practicing that yesterday. But they how? even put it on YouTube. How, how did JW survive so long? He was just, he was there uh, as well. With Crims, either way, the, the uh, smoke will go down, the bomb will be planted, and we have a, a live round for TSM. They can definitely take this one. Pronax is looking to creep through the smoke towards Paul, and he is uh, he's alone in this. And I think he's largely gone undetected, so nicely nicely done. A bit of subterfuge there from Pronax. Oh, assassinating Zipnix, and then Device falls as well. That was amazing from Pronax. Well, very well done. What is going on, Dan? This is a crazy, crazy match, just like uh, yesterday's Inferno featuring Fnatic and Envious. I wonder that, that that crouch peeking in the pool area. I wonder how that looks to the enemy, because it looks very old school, you might say, from that view. But I don't know how that looks on the. You know, well, well, Carrigan's video. Um, you see it from both perspectives. I need to rewatch. One up for both sides now. Fnatic with a three-round lead. 
I have no idea who's going to win this match, Dan. I have no idea. Yeah, it's pretty impossible to predict. But obviously, Fnatic have the have the advantage now. So, uh, Nicole Munch for TSM to try to solidify some kind of economic control, but that's not happening. We got aggression from Fnatic, and that's an excellent it's the grenade bomb, there. Dan. It's a bomb. Just bouncing that straight into the face of Carrigan. Cajun B gets flicked down as well, and this aggression has been sublime. Fnatic. Four versus one, TSM, it all fell apart. Before they could even construct a round, as you would normally expect to see it develop, it has been deconstructed by a Fnatic, by JW, who's been the engineer of their, de of their destruction. Despite the nerfs to that, that major nerf to the AW, AWP a while ago, JW's movement to like that, to crack these shots off, I don't know how he does it. I don't know how he does it, but he does. Fnatic extend their leads. These rounds are really really insane TSM back on the eco though and, it, and this is a really good opportunity for Fnatic to really extend their lead quite significantly on the CT side at least for the uh, next round or two full nades for Fnatic as well full defuse kits full everything all the things the bits and bobs kitchen sink everything so what can TSM do they've got three plays left that nade went through seven countries to land there and delivered the payload in style. There's not much to say about this round. No, now, there's this point, there, really. is, there is not. There is really not all that much to say about it. It's it's looking like uh, the, the Kingwin match now. Oh, the knife as well. Humiliation. Yeah, it's looking similar to the Kingwin one because Fnatic, uh, the way that they are taking some of the rounds is just by not allowing the op opposition to establish any any plays by kind of getting in there just before they can really execute something. Now, uh, you know, that's it has, doesn't go that doesn't go for all rounds, but they have been doing that effectively against TSM and, and uh, G2 earlier. So so you can see why they had such a strong strong CD side against G2. It seems to work against TSM. And uh, wow, the JW thinks he's, he's playing with a rifle again. JW, when Fnatic, oh, <laughs> like this with a double tag. Oh, <laughs> no boy. way. This is like, what can you do when JW is in this mode? I was, going, I was going to say, like, if you're watching this, how can you even counter this? How do you even counter this? Oh, you can counter it, but if you know it's coming. But you, how do you ever know that that's going to come? Oh, yeah, sure, JW. No, I mean, the general. In the first 15 seconds, it's going to be the behind whole, us. The whole, the whole match. Banana. The whole match, Dan. With how do all. you. Like, let's say, because again, let's just rem 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 remember that um, all the picks for every match in the Face It League have happened already. So if Fnatic have just picked Inferno at every single opportunity. And you know it's coming. You know that this is coming. Right, how right. how can you? What can you do against it? Yeah, that's that's pure JW un unpredictability at its finest. <laughs> Crims is a I don't know. He's a tree, Dan. <laughs> Crims is a tree. Is it, I don't even. How, how do they? I, I don't know. I don't know the answers. Know the answers. Oh, here we go again. Push coming in through the smoke. Olaf Meister trying to find any bit of information he can. Spraying through the smoke. Looking through the corner, Karagun's managed to get himself out of there a little bit, but he will get taken down by Olaf Meister. Olaf Meister changing his spray, looking for the trade frag as Ibnik stuck in his back of the site versus two. He's taken down Flusher. Will he take Olaf Meister as well? Indeed he will. TSM get another round on the board. The gap isn't even that big. They've got a reasonable yeah. amount of rounds so far. It's just a, just the fashion in which Fnatic have won their rounds. They've just been ridiculous. It's been amazing to watch. And now the double up is coming out again. Fnatic. It feels like, I mean, they're, they're definitely taking, I think, a little bit of, uh, uh, you know, a few liberties here and there. You know, it's not like they're playing, you know, finals of CPL or something. But, uh, but they're, yeah. They're playing with full freedom. It's almost like they're at the Burning Man Festival. They've got the funk costumes on. They're walking around in the desert, having all kinds of weird fun. But Olaf Meister will be the first loss of this round. That's a nice nade. <laughs> with a the minimal spray to, nice. to finish off the job. Crims is still working pretty damn well. And Fnatic will start to move down Banana with three people. We've got Cajun Beat around the corner. Wow, I don't believe it. They, the audaciousness of this, it just doesn't end. And now once again, crazy pushes coming in from Fnatic with that three-man Banana play. Oh, JW missing the shot. And he's going to creep peek. Of course he is. He's he gets the kill onto Carrigan. And Dupree is there, left in a state of confusion and confuddlement. But he will pick up the kill onto JW in the end. The bomb will be reclaimed. That's a three versus two situation. And where do you go from this? Basically, they don't have any map control now. They don't have banana. They don't have...
Well, they have actually a guy up on top mid. That's that's something. That is something. And the bomb is going to have to go there. Because banana is a big question mark. And uh, this is on... This is on Zipnix to not die straight away. And he will get the kill onto Pronax. Very important. Now TSM have a chance. Pronax is almost the only person you can have a rough expectation of where he might be in that situation. Other than that, they have to pretty much look at every single angle on the map to find a Fnatic player. Crim's rotating in from B to join his teammate Flusher. Crim's and Flusher on the retake. Dupree has other ideas, taking down Crim's. Zipnix spotted in the pit, so they know there's a crossfire situation. Flusher trying to flush him out, but it will not be the case. TSM close the gap once more. Yeah, really nice, really nice uh, round saving plays. The thing is, though, at the same time, it's just chaos uh, or crisis management from TSM. That's what the, that's what Fnatic are throwing them in. They're throwing them into these tumultuous situations. Was like, holy crap! How the hell? Oh, that was a nasty stab. That was. We saw that on the T wow. side in the previous match as well. Um, but yeah. So wow, that was a big one. Yeah, that was. I don't. I've never seen one. That, that was a full right click down. That was crazy. All anyway, the, all the way in. So. I'd, 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 again, it's crisis management. Fnatic keep putting them into really weird positions. None of this has been seen before, probably. And here we go. JW once again gets aggressive. And even though you you kind of know he's going to get aggressive somewhere, they still have a hard job actually stopping him from doing damage. So it's really cool to see this play. Now, TSM, five rounds. That's pretty respectable. Can they increase it even more? JW is going to throw a wrench into the works. Again. And Zimnix is, is dead. JW with two kills through the window on the balcony. How does, he, how does he keep refragging from those positions? I don't it's so weird, but the problem is, like, t like he puts a smoke down in the app, so TSM respect it, but, but there's no respect here for Fnatic. Easy 3k at the end on Banana as well. There's no respect from Fnatic, and there's full respect from TSM in a lot of situations. And again, the, the score is relatively normal, but the fashion in which TSM are losing the rounds is bananas. Yeah, it's it's nuts. It is great to watch though. So look at the buy from TSM in the last round. They have a scout on Inferno. A Galil, a pistol here, a pistol there, and an AK-47. Just a singular. Fnatic full M4A4 with the one AWP onto JW. Having a whale of a time. Pronax up. You can see he's facing the wall in case TSM go for a push through the smoke with flashbangs. He's able to mount an offense if his uh, teammate gets blinded. He's playing the angles now, which have been working very well for Fnatic so far, as we saw in previous rounds. Yeah, so uh, less than optimal buy from uh, TSM, and they really are scrambling to get that last round. That's sixth on the board. Five is okay, but uh, they need to make their lives a little bit easier. And Fnatic have uh, taken a bit of a change of pace in this round. They've, they've decided to play much more passively. That said, this peak timing from Flusher is pretty damn strong. Although, where are the refrags? There it is. Pronax gets both players. There's one more to follow up. And that is going to be that for Pronax. He's sent to the bench. But TSM, they are really getting low on health and players. But they will equalize. We've got Olaf Meister and Crims on the rotation. And this is a story we've seen happen uh, over and over again. And uh, Zinix is trying to throw the bomb over to... to uh, to his teammates, so he doesn't have to leave that position, but it's getting a little bit awkward, so he's going to push in there into the bomb site with the vice. Speaking of awkward, he can't risk going back to the pit, so they're going to have to play a crossfire with an orb and a galil. Oh. And oh that's, no. that's never going to work out. The flames will take down Zipnix, leaving device alone with 11 HP versus two full health players with M4s. It is doable for him. The uh, galil has good armor penetration, but Olaf Meister will do the 180 no scope and take the round. That was a really close close attempt by Device. I mean, Olaf Meister was full on HP and he's got sent down to 22, but 9 6, uh, uh, sorry, 10, uh, 10 5 will be the score there for Fnatic. So, a very strong CT side from them once again. And uh, just the, the unconventional ways in which they were winning some of the rounds, you can never predict what they're doing. And if, if you ever try to adapt to what, you can't adapt to what they're doing either because it's so out there, some of the stuff that they've been pulling off. It's really the. I guess really the you know one of the merits of having a player like JW especially is very good at engineering crazy plays like that. Either way, pistol for the second half, very critical that TSM secure this one. So TSM looking for the information. They are hungry for the information, but it is lacking so far. Fnatic gonna start moving up mid with a certain timing, but Cajun B's found the info and he's found JW's face, which has been 
removed all off the trade. Now Fnatic will start to speed up towards the A site. TSM moving both directions down B towards A. Uh, light on the numbers. All of my are making it even worse. Four versus two now. Device forced to push through some smoke here if he wants to help his teammate in time. He won't make it in time. Device versus four. There's the first shot though. He needs to get even more creative, but Crims will execute him. That's the pistol round one by Fnatic. You would expect TSM to... I, I guess they were not going to force buy here. Usually though, T TSM are one of the teams that do the least force buys. And we are going to see that they're going to go uh, halfway with it, so they won't go for the force buy. It's a really horrible situation because they're behind so many rounds, but uh, they really want to bank on that strong strong buy round where they have all the grenades. They really know how much how much they're worth. And whereas we saw Fnatic in this position, they, they decided just to go crazy. They wanted all the force buys. JW looking to entry with the Sawn Off, not in apps, but on Banana, which can work as well. The spray down, I'm telling you, man. Fnatic's angles are sharp as a butcher's pencil at the moment. Cajun B and Carrigan, last two remaining. We had a lot of CZs, but they barely had a chance to fire any bullets. Now it's just Carrigan with Flusher waiting for him. Flusher will get the spray down as well. Bit of celebration at the end there. Fnatic with a clean sheet in that round. It's, it's kind of crazy how, with some of the rounds, how, how Fnatic make TSM look so bad with some of these rounds. Like that round, for example, it made TSM look very, very helpless. When in, in actual fact, it's just, you know, in some of these rounds, Fnatic are just shining so brightly that it's just it's just eclipsing everything else. So 12-5, TSM in with a, another, just, uh, just a very light investment. They're going to stack towards Banana and uh, hope that they have a little bit more luck against Fnatic this time to at least get some economic damage in there. But uh, this time, Fnatic have decided to go towards A, so TSM will be fresh out of luck when it comes to predicting the right side to stack. Great positioning by Flusher there. He put the tiniest gap through to the potential flash pick from the CT, so they had minimal opportunity to try and steal an AK there. And he will go for the second full spray attempt, and this time he will find himself a device. Carrigan with a one tap onto JW. See if he can save this Sawn off. This is actually a good opportunity for him to try and make some money with that thing. He will move forward to try and get to those close quarters for the uh, the one meat shot. However, Pronax with the jumping Mac 10 will finish off the job. All right, so Fnatic full buy, of course. TSM loaded fully on M4A4s. No silencers to be spotted. And they even have a good amount of grenades, thanks to, to the fact that they uh, were able to not actually force buy. This exodus of the Silent Stem 4 is quite impressive. JW continuing with the Sawn Off. See if he goes into his beloved apps with that. Uh, he's gonna, that's actually it's also still reasonable play. JW is a connoisseur of the shotgun here in Counter Strike Go. Carrigan, though, to get the first frag and then to fall swiftly afterwards. So TSM at a disadvantage. Again, lacking the nades. They've only got one smoke left. And they're still over a minute on the clock for Fnatic to do something. There have only three players left. It'll be hard to execute, should that be their chosen decision. They're going to be wrapping around into the CT spawn, though. And they had a, a read on Dupree's position as he gave it away. And he's going to go down as they try to get themselves onto that B-bomb site. And Device is just placing himself in Banana right now because he's, it, he's just putting himself in a retake position. There's not a lot he can do to hold the bomb site. But as you can see, doing damage from the outskirts is going to improve TSM's chances to go for the retake. They cannot stop the bomb from going down. Oh, that was excellent there by Flusher. Delivering device out of the round. And now it's going to be up to Zipnix. That is a really hard retake for Zipnix to try to attempt. He hasn't got a kit. There might be one along the way. Let's have a, have a look and see if he can pull this one off. Follow spots him. This is, uh, this is tough. Zipnix is going to go in there. Brazenly facing in an exposed angle, and that's going to be the round for Fnatic. 14-5, and they're making quick work of the Danes through nothing less of, of nothing less than stellar play. Two things. Uh, one, I forgot to mention actually that every day of the Face It League, we will be uh, we will allow you, the community, to choose one POV from a player who you'd like to see uploaded to the YouTube Face It VODs or Face It Common. Not sure which one it will end up on. So um, we'll put a tweet out soon after this match, and you can tell us which POV you'd like to see. I'm guessing it's going to be Crimson on the previous match, but there's still more matches to come. So TSM going for the fourth by three fan matches and two CZs. Flusher with an early pick towards Banana. Tell me about that one. Well, <laughs> I mean, TSN trying to get creative, but it is uh, it is Fnatic. You've seen, again, they are just they're playing so well, and they just, they, they just, what can you do, James, when they're playing this well? What can you do? T 
TSM with all their individual skill and coordination and experience haven't been able to, to stop the onslaught. And the starting off with the poor economy on the CT side, of course, limits their options because when they have all the incendiaries to play with, they can do better when it comes to starving out Fnatic. But that's not, they, they've had to do a lot with, with very little. Okay, so that uh, Molotov might be a saving grace for TSM at least for a few seconds. There's one lurker towards A, and it seems the rotation's coming in. Pronax left to push on his own, try and hold things, hold people up. He will get traded by Carrigan through the smoke. Carrigan rotating to the side, expecting something, but hearing nothing, and rotating straight to A. The alarm bells rung by Zipnix. Is there enough time, though, for them to save this round? One versus four, it might not be. No, I don't think their chances are good here. Uh, for Carrigan, he's going to go in, he's getting spotted, and despite not being tagged, he's still against four players, four Fnatic players. Despite even JW running at him and giving him the orb hit, just an orb donation. He's got JW's little signature on there as well. Pretty nice, pretty nice gun. But uh, he is going to go down as well. 15-5, Fnatic are completely crushing games. We chose Fnatic on our alpha draft, and uh, we also chose Crims and Flusher, I think. If yep. I'm not mistaken. So yep, yep. So we're doing quite well there. I think we also chose the Vice. Before this match started, we were joint top on the picks. I can't wait to see what it's going to be after this, should Fnatic make it through this round. The fourth buy from TSM is going to be two Mag 7s, one M4, Dupree and Fire, which he's now escaped, and a CZ. One of the Mag 7s has gone already. Zipmix is going to get the meat shot onto Olaf Meister. Here we go. T Dupree will manage to... Uh, hold things down there, but it's still only one rifle on these two players of TSM, with a push coming in towards A. Yeah, looking, Fnatic looking for the finish, but you've got TSM, they are kicking and screaming as Fnatic well. try to drag them to, uh, to the finishing line, and it's going to be Dupree in with the D, looking for the quick shot, and <laughs> it is JW just dancing around the box, dancing around the crate, looking for the no-scope, trying to finish it in style, jumping up on the barrels, but it's Dupree to get the frag and the round for his team, so they will extend it. They're hanging on by their fingernails, and uh, Dupree is uh, going to keep them in it. In it for now. Let's see if the CTs can get any momentum in their favor. This could be the turning point. It's not going to be easy, though. Their money is still lacking. It's going to be a desperate situation. It's going to be scratching teeth and nails. Holding on to the edge of the cliff, that. Okay, it's... Uh, Going to be uh, all on Carrigan. So th this is uh, maybe one of the best buys we've seen at TSM CT side. That's how that's how terrible their CT sides have looked. But Carrigan's going to go for that aggression down middle, looking for the spot. JW is there, of course. He's going to be moving out. I think the the gun was spotted. Carrigan's ready for the shot, and that is it. JW's out of the rounds. Sent back into the bench. That's a very important note. All the animations have been redone in Counter Strike, and you can see the gun swings around to the right and exposed his position, which may have helped the frag come in there. Pronax taking down Cajun B, starting to weaken, to maim the TSM side. Smokes down Arch, that's a lack of information. They could be rotating towards CZ. What a great timing there for a device to come in and take the frag, stopping Olaf Meister from pushing through to CT on Arch. That's made Fnatic back off towards the B bomb site. Yeah, and for this round to actually work for Fnatic, now they need to instantly get the entries here. There's, there can be nothing short of that. Oh, they're actually going to try to fake this. Okay, no, they're going back with everybody. I thought maybe they would send just uh, just Flusher up into B to cause a distraction. But they're going in here. Three versus two. The two players defending on the A side makes a lot of sense. Much easier to, to isolate these two players than if they were to attack B. But Carrigan's got other ideas. There is the trade, though. That's what they needed. Next player is in pit. How long can Zipnik survive? That's really the question in for Fnatic. They don't seem to care. They're just going to let them sit there in pit. They're going to plant anyway, and now they're going to try to take the shots. But this is a very hard position to defend from for Fnatic. They're going to try to do their best, though. And there is Zipnik still just holding onto that pit position, waiting for his teammates to come in before he makes a move. And there it is. Dupree is going to be the engineer of death and destruction. And moving in with that spray down with the M4. And that's going to cue the rest of his team to go in. They clean it up. They punch in the numbers. And they win the round. TSM with seven now. The Fnatic still with an ability to put the buys in, I think. Yeah. Buys. TSM with some momentum under their belt. Looking to add some rounds down there as well. Full nades, full buys for both teams. The aggression will continue. Chicken ushered out of the way in order for a smoke to be deployed.
So let's see if TSM can hold on. Again, there is no room, there is no margin for error anymore. They are up against many, many match points, but it's a good start from them. Dupree ripping Flusher in half. Absolutely. This is a tentative situation, though, from for both teams. Up on Banana, we can see the uh, line of defense there for the CTs, and also uh, the, the early pressure from Fnatic. They left JW there actually with the AK, and Karagrin is doing more damage with that a AWP that he that he uh, he's picked up from JW previously. And they can't get up this choke point. They're trying to entry frag their way in, but Karagrin is on point. Might see a barrel there. Ooh, tease the barrel. Had a choice of people to try and aim for there, but he'll be traded by the second. Olaf Meister gets annihilated as well. TSM survivor four plays, that's also good, because even though they can't lose any rounds, if they win the rounds with few players, then the money starts to deplete. They can't afford as many smokes. They can't choke the point, the choke points even more, etc. And Fnatic have more opportunities to break TSM. Yeah, and they're going to uh, save here, pretty much. And allow themselves to build up some money for a stronger attack in the following round. So this should be over pretty quickly, in theory. They should get pretty destroyed by uh, the balcony player, first of all. And then the uh, the shots raining in from Carrigan at distance should be enough to stop this round. And a change to the M4A4 actually helps the CT here because it gives them more bullets to spray with. As you can see here, as demonstrated by my beautiful assistant, Zipix. He uh, put down the, uh, the strawberry basket for this demonstration. And picked up the gun. Crims may... <laughs> well, the there's execution that. execution style. That looks uncomfortable, Dan. I would not like to be lying on the floor in that pose. Well, he was, he's, he was very dead, so... I think he may think be... He really minded too much. I think he may be timing out. We shall see. So while we have a brief pause uh, here, maybe we can quickly show the goodies in our goodie bag. We are closing in on our next milestone, which is 650k followers, at which point we will be doing a triple raffle. The first item will be an AWP Medusa. This will be for one of our subscribers, along with an Icarus Fell. There will be an open raffle, which everybody is eligible to, eligible to enter for an M4A4 Poseidon. Quite timely, in fact, since everybody seems to want it now. But for those of you at home, I wouldn't just blindly follow what the pros are doing here. You can see the M4A4 is very uh, popular. Definitely have a look at both guns yourself and see what works for you. We saw G2 Kinguin, for example, in a previous match. At least half of them were using the Silenced M4. Uh, so maybe if you're an aim aimer, you'll prefer the Silenced M4 over the M4A4. Who knows? I, I think everybody is an aimer, James. Where is the boiler, Dan? In this game. Well, I suppose you could be correct in that comment that it does require you to aim <laughs> pretty much everything in the game in the game boiler is in fact in the truck why, why is the boiler there well, where is it going it looks like it's i guess it needs uh it looks like it's done for it looks like the boiler is over needs to be replaced it needs to be replaced requires replacing did you did you know that there was a lion on this map a what a lion a lion didn't you just see the lion well it's not well, no, 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 it's not an actual lion. Now we're seeing a, a cannon monument. That would be quite cool, though, if there were a greater range of animal animals. I'm sick of the uh, the chickens, James. Can't we get more interesting animals? The chicken, the chickens are, the chickens have been causing me problems recently, Dan. I must say, not because I've been Why eating chickens and you know there's been diseases and so on, but because sometimes you, let's say, let's say your your angle is below ground level, like for example on mid, you can be below the ground level aiming and a chicken can run past it can get you shots it can make you fire a shot depending on where the chicken emerges so it do, it's sometimes the chickens get you killed man not everyone can say that but i certainly can maybe you can they're, too. they're distracting they're distracting the worst is when they like run out of boiler or something like holding you're holding uh mid from arch with the off or something and then you know they're running out of boiler mm. distracting distracting well they are here, and they are here to stay. Can you taser a chicken? Yeah, why not? They have a hitbox. So you can shoot them. You can shoot them. You so, can. so why not be? So why wouldn't uh, th that's another change as well. Taser. Gaben reduced it to a hundred dollars. Yeah. Apparently, actually, I think maybe we should do a video on the taser because it does have actual practical use. For example, let's say y you're often in situations. Ar as arguably, it's pretty overpowered. I have hundred dollars is an instant kill. I, yeah, I haven't, <laughs> like, I, haven't used it, I haven't used it that much, but that is a good point. 
for example, if you, let's say you're in a 1v1 situation and you're a CT on slope on dust 2, um, a slope or elevator, if you will, and there's a T planting a bomb on the A site, you can jump and literally taser them, and it's almost guaranteed. If they are anywhere near the edge, it's, it's guaranteed, almost. I don't know. I, I need to test the range, but it's, uh, it's, I've witnessed the yeah. destruction I don't like at it such a range. Because, I, I don't know, I think it's too, too strong. No, I don't think it should really it be. Should be like well, the thing is, kill, like maybe fifty damage or something. The, quest, the question is, right? It was. It just appeared one day. There's a taser, okay? So the question is, as as organizers, do we ban the taser or do we embrace the taser? I mean, it hasn't been a problem, so you well, could, yeah. you could argue that there isn't. Well, that, that's not necessarily the reason why you shouldn't ban it. But obviously the CZ was introduced, I and it was never, a, and the CZ was broken at all, and that was there was never a discussion about is should that be banned and so on. Yeah. And maybe we shouldn't start banning things, but then it's kind of this it's thing that's appeared. It's pretty. It's, it's kind of like a. What's well, the only thing that's really clearly like the? It, it feels like it's there for the casual players because yeah, it's yeah, yeah. very different. It's it's like being able to throw your knife basically, and it instantly killing someone. Of course, the range is not very good, mm. but it does seem very different to everything else. So, so maybe maybe. I don't know. It's, I I I think maybe there's been a gentleman's agreement between a lot of the players. I don't think so. I just think maybe they don't even, they don't even think about it, or they don't have the time to study the thing to see how you can exploit it. Maybe they buy it for fun, and it's a bit fiddly as well. When you, I don't know if I don't know if you run at the same speed. It was it was three hundred dollars before, right? Or was I have it, no idea. Was it more expensive? I have no idea. Because if it's more expensive than three hundred dollars, then you should get a pistol, obviously. Oh, of course, yeah. Because but now it's one hundred dollars. People will start buying it. Yeah, and you that's probably, the entire point. Yeah, you could probably one shot from the same distance with the P two fifty and a further distance. I hope, maybe, or maybe it's a similar distance. P two fifty one shot and a taser, one shot. But who knows? So we we've, we're hearing that uh, I don't know what problem Crims is having, but he is unable to. Well, literally, his internet has died. His internet is dead. And Fnatic are getting a stand-in. Who knows who will turn up? We will find out soon enough. So bear with us, guys, while we wait for Fnatic to resolve that issue. So now Fnatic are at, at match point. Crims has been playing spectacularly. But now Crims is, his internet has died. Yeah, but I mean, th that's the thing. They can. Th they only need to win one, one round. And what is it, like, uh, is it 15-8 or something? 15-8? Something along those lines. And Crims is playing on the B-bomb site, which is maybe easier for a stand-in to play. Because well, they're not playing CT anymore. Indeed, they are not playing CT anymore, Dan. I am an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see. We'll see who. Do you remember that time when when Khan stood in on Nuke? Got those. Uh, got the highlight reel going on I as well. I don't remember that actually. It was a while ago. There's a there's a highlight reel of Khan playing for Fnatic in CS:GO sometime last year on uh, Facecom, YouTube.com oh, forward slash Facecom. Yeah, yeah. I vaguely vaguely do remember that actually. Yeah. But usually when, when Fnatic have stand-ins, it doesn't go so well. But usually, I, I think, wait, wasn't there a situation where both Khan and Devilwalk were standing in or something? Not that I recall. And someone e somebody else, I don't, I don't know. But yeah, so far we've had a much better situation when it comes to less disruption, I think, during matches mm. for various reasons. Usually it's just like technical issues from, from the players' perspectives, which can happen, of yeah. course. I don't want to jinx anything, Dan. So I'm just going to move immediately away from that conversation. Um, in terms of, like we mentioned the giveaway at 650k earlier, Unicorn are doing a giveaway for a stat track Falchion Knife Factory New Fade on Twitter as well. I think maybe producer Reese can bring up the overlay so you can see the Unicorn Twitter because it's a bit difficult to spell because it has a K, lacks an O, blah, blah, blah. It's, uni it's Unicorn Co. Since I don't see it coming up <laughs> on the screen there. Well, also we, we, we retweet stuff. From our Facebook account there yes. as well. So you can on Facebook, you can see the Facebook Twitter account. You can see the retweet there. Get yourself involved. I think they're picking a winner in six days. So hopefully we will have a replacement for Crim soon. We have one more match to come as well today, which is going to be Titan versus TSM. So, uh, you know, I was thinking like if, if Fnatic had closed this game out a few rounds ago, then I would say, you know, TSM needs to kind of get their head back in the game Maybe it's just one of those things, that, and they don't even sweat it, being a top team and, and so on. Sometimes, yeah, best of one online. Sometimes things I happen. Mean, yeah, they're, they're all all the top teams are reserved to understanding that, like anybody anybody can win. Yeah, I mean that, that that's that's kind of the the idea. Of course, that's not to take away from any of the wins that we do see, because it's it's you know obviously Fnatic are winning because they're really damn good. But there is there is like a distinct 
amount of variance. You know, it's it's the, the what what really matters and really counts is that land finals. And and so it's, you know, definitely you want to get as many points as you can in the league. And of course, it just generally gen really helps. Yeah, you get you better seeding. Be, yeah, and it's also a cumulative effect. Like the more matches you win, the better you f you feel. And there's a huge emotional component to the game. Of as as much as you know, you want to be analytical, want to quantify stuff. The huge emotional component to to being the best, which Fnatic have have had that throughout their entire history so far in the last year or so, that they always win. They so win, win, and win. We've got Slap joining. Oh, Slap is really good. I think he's teamless as well. I am Slap not. Slap is very good. I'm not a hundred percent sure. He's rocking a London conspiracy logo. Okay, maybe LC did so pick him up. Yeah, I'm not sure if he's seamless, but anyway, for now he's on Fnatic Dan. Slap is very, very good. So they found somebody from Sweden. Yeah, he's uh, he was from the uh, the Acer lineup with with Threat. That was the previous previous team that he did very well on, and uh, I think proved to a lot of people that he was very damn good. But we'll have JW going down straight away. Carrigan is he's uh, he's been the the guy who's been been stopping Fnatic actually from getting that that match the match win. Not that uh, well. Never mind. He's been <laughs> he's been <laughs> he promptly erased. He yeah, he has been erased from history with that AWP shot. Nice bunny hopping. It seems to be easier now with the changes as well. Great snap by Slap to take down Zipnix. He's been such a powerhouse in the pit area for TSM, but not for this round. Three versus two. Now TSM in a very difficult position indeed. Obviously they have to go for it. There is no choice. This could be the last round. We don't know, but we are soon to find out. Slap playing the pit position. I think we might have uh, Pronax in Graveyard as well. The Molotov, if it lands correctly, will force Slap out of the position into the open where he will be eliminated by Dupree. The clock is ticking. They do have kits on both players. Going for the spray down. Pronax finding Dupree and the traders will come in. Flusher to take it. That was the last round that we needed. <laughs> Slap. Uh, it's funny that Slap's like GG. Is that <laughs>